In the heart of the ancient Middle East, a remarkable journey was unfolding. A journey that would become a cornerstone of faith and a testament to God's unwavering provision. This journey was led by a man named Moses, who had been chosen by God to guide the Israelites out of bondage and towards the promised land. Little did they know that they were about to witness one of the most miraculous displays of divine care, the provision of manna from heaven. The Exodus begins the story begins in the land of Egypt where the descendants of Jacob, also known as the Israelites, had been enslaved for generations. God had heard their cries for deliverance and chosen Moses to be his messenger. Through a series of plagues and miracles, God compelled the powerful Pharaoh to release the Israelites from their bondage. The culmination of this dramatic process was the Passover, during which the angel of death passed over the homes of the Israelites, sparing their firstborn sons. With the mighty hand of God guiding them, the Israelites left Egypt in haste, with their unleavened bread dough still in their kneading troughs. They were headed for freedom in the promised land, but the journey would be far from easy. Into the wilderness as the Israelites embarked on their journey, they were met with an immediate obstacle, the Red Sea. Pharaoh, regretting his decision to let them go, led his armies in pursuit of the Israelites. With the sea before them and the Egyptian army behind, the situation seemed hopeless. But God, in his unfailing faithfulness, parted the waters of the Red Sea for the Israelites, allowing them to pass safely through on dry land. Once they reached the other side, the sea closed in on the pursuing Egyptians, ending their threat forever. This spectacular event was a powerful reminder of God's presence and His commitment to the Israelites. It marked a turning point in their journey and gave them renewed hope as they continued through the wilderness. Hunger in the wilderness as the Israelites journeyed deeper into the desert. They soon faced a new challenge, hunger. The harsh and unforgiving conditions of the wilderness made it difficult to find food, and the people began to grumble and complain. Exodus chapter 16 verses 2 to 3, Niv, records their complaints. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. The Israelites had fond memories of the variety of food they had in Egypt. Despite the bitter slavery they endured, they couldn't see the bigger picture, that God was leading them to a land flowing with milk and honey, a land of promise and abundance. Instead, they were focused on their immediate hunger and discomfort. God's response, manna from heaven Moses, always faithful to God's guidance, turned to the Lord for help. In response, God made a remarkable promise, He would provide bread from heaven to sustain the Israelites. Exodus chapter 16 verse 4, Niv, conveys God's words to Moses. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. Moses relayed God's message to the people, explaining that God would provide them with food each day. They were to gather just enough manna for their daily needs, and on the sixth day, they could collect a double portion to account for the Sabbath, a day of rest when no manna would fall. Manna from Heaven In the book of Exodus, the Israelites found themselves in the wilderness, and they complained to Moses and Aaron about their lack of food. In response, God provided manna from heaven. Manna was a type of bread-like substance that appeared on the ground each morning, and the Israelites collected it to eat. God also provided quail in the evening to give them meat. Water from a rock, the Israelites also faced a water shortage in the desert. In the book of Exodus, there is a story where God instructed Moses to strike a rock, and water gushed out to quench the people's thirst. This rock is known as Meribah, or Massa, the widow's oil and flour. In the book of 1 Kings, there's a story about the prophet Elijah staying with a widow and her son during a severe famine. Despite having very little oil and flour left, God miraculously multiplied their resources, ensuring they had enough food to survive. These stories emphasize God's provision and care for His people during difficult times. They also serve as reminders of the importance of trust and faith in God's ability to meet our needs, even when circumstances seem dire. These stories are found in the Old Testament of the Bible, primarily in the books of Exodus and 1 Kings. While manna was a daily source of bread, God also provided meat to the Israelites in the form of quail. In the evenings, a great number of quail descended upon the camp of the Israelites, offering them a supplementary source of nourishment. 
God's care was evident not only in providing bread from heaven but also in ensuring they had meat for sustenance. God, in his mercy and power, provided a solution. He instructed Moses to take his staff and strike a rock, and water gushed forth from it. This life-giving water sustained the Israelites and their livestock, quenching their thirst in the midst of the arid desert. This rock, often known as Meribah, or, Massa, bore witness to God's miraculous provision and his patience in the face of human doubt and complaints. Lessons in Faith and Dependence The story of God's miraculous provision of manna, quail, and water in the wilderness serves as a powerful testament to God's unwavering care for his people. It teaches essential lessons about faith, obedience, and dependence on God during times of hardship and uncertainty. Trust in God's provision. The Israelites had to trust that God would provide for their daily needs. They couldn't hoard or rely on their own efforts but had to depend on his daily provision. Obedience. God's instructions about collecting manna and resting on the Sabbath required obedience. It was a test of their willingness to follow his guidance. Patience. God displayed patience with his people despite their frequent complaints and doubts. He remained faithful to his promises and continued to provide for them. Recognition of God's power. The miraculous nature of these provisions reminded the Israelites of God's omnipotence and his ability to meet their needs in extraordinary ways. As the morning sun rose over the wilderness, the Israelites awoke to a miraculous sight. Covering the ground like dew was a fine, flaky substance that glistened in the early light. It was the manna from heaven, the bread God had promised. Exodus chapter 16 verses 14 to 15, Niv, describes the manna. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. The name, manna, itself is derived from the Hebrew phrase, mahu, which means, what is it? The Israelites had never seen anything like it before. And they were understandably curious about this mysterious provision. Instructions for gathering manna Moses relayed God's instructions for gathering manna to the people. They were to gather enough for their daily needs, an omer, about two quarts, per person, and nothing more. Those who gathered too much found that it rotted and became infested with worms overnight. This was a lesson in trust, obedience, and contentment, teaching the Israelites to rely on God's daily provision. Exodus chapter 16 verses 19 to 20, Nib, records this aspect of God's instructions. Then Moses said to them, No one is to keep any of it until morning. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses, they kept part of it until morning. But it was full of maggots and began to smell. The Israelites learned to gather their manna each morning, trusting that God would provide for their needs anew every day. The double portion for the Sabbath on the sixth day of the week, the Israelites were instructed to gather a double portion of manna because no manna would fall on the Sabbath. A day of rest and worship. They were to prepare for this by collecting twice as much on the preceding day. This double portion miraculously remained fresh and edible for the entire Sabbath. Exodus chapter 16 verses 22 to 24, Niv, recounts this provision. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much, two omers for each person, and the leaders of the community came and reported this to Moses. He said to them, This is what the Lord commanded. Tomorrow is to be a day of Sabbath rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. So bake what you want to bake and boil what you want to boil. Save whatever is left and keep it until morning. So they saved it until morning, as Moses commanded. And it did not stink or get maggots in it. This double portion on the sixth day and the preservation of the manna throughout the Sabbath reinforced the importance of resting in God's provision and observing the Sabbath as a day of worship and reflection. The faithful routine for 40 years, as the Israelites wandered in the wilderness, the routine of manna continued. Each morning, the manna appeared, providing sustenance for the entire community. They would gather just enough for the please subscribe my YouTube channel I hope you like this video thank you.